so I know what it's like to be an artist and thinking of the spaces that my work will be in. But I'm really curious about your perspective as a curator and how you organize a space and assemble the kinds of relationships that happen within a space. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to think of curating as a truly spatial means of telling a story. So you want to think about how the visitor to the show is going to walk through the space. Um, so you might think kind of in a um, progressive sense what they're going to see first and how they're going to walk around. That's going to help you think about how they'll experience the story that you're telling. Um, you also want to make sure that you're not overcrowding the space. Um, artwork needs breathing room, so you want to have um, a good amount of negative space for the art to be able to kind of live, I think, organically and get the proper attention to each piece. Um, I also like to um, emphasize that people should be thinking about the gallery in three dimensions and not be stuck only to the walls of the space. So even if you're showing all 2D work, you can think about how um, the different like visual sight lines that you're creating are bringing the viewer out into the center of the space. It's going to make a much more dynamic show if everything is not just pressed up against the walls. So I really recommend when you're working on your proposal, part of the process is you're going to have to submit a prospective floor plan, which would show um, how you're thinking about organizing the artworks in the space. So come into the VAC, come into the gallery, walk around. Everything feels really different in person when you're in here. You don't get a sense of the scale when you're just looking at pictures of the gallery or the map. Um, so you want to come in and see maybe how many pieces are on the wall, what size they are, so you can get a sense of what you can fit in the space. And also think about um, your experience moving around and what sorts of things would create a really exciting experience, would draw the person into the different kinds of nooks and corners. Um, the center space is sort of a T shape, it wraps around into this corner that we're sitting in now, so everything's not one little boxy room. And you want to consider all of the possibilities of that kind of organization. So Riel, um, when you were planning your show's floor plan, how did you conceptualize the works in the space and what types of considerations did you include? I'm so excited to talk about it because that's one of the most um, exciting and invigorating parts of putting a show together is hanging it and trying to figure out what will be the most appropriate where. Um, I think in some terms there's a practicality involved. So when Amber and I were thinking of the different kinds of uh, medias that we wanted to bring into the space, we weren't just dealing with photographs on the wall, we were dealing with books and also a video. Um, and in the space behind us is the only space that can actually be dark enough to show a video. So that inherently kind of made a decision for us in terms of where a video would be most appropriate. Um, and because this section is kind of closed off as its own room, it, it had a different kind of experience than the rest of the space. And to me, as I was walking through, as you suggested, um, as somebody do while planning a show, I found that this space kind of acted more like, um, like a breath of fresh air, kind of like a pause and a moment for contemplation, especially with the kind of um, natural light that's occurring in this space. Mm -hmm. So there was a bit of a theme that was being developed by my experience of walking through the space and the practicality of what this space had to offer. Mm -hmm. um, so this became kind of a, a space of respite and a breath, and um, somebody could grab a theme. And the images in here had a bit of levity to them. Um, and included more natural environmental cues. Whereas the rest of the space had a video because it was a darker area. Mm -hmm. And then the two parallel walls acted as a conversation between one another. So that there was like a very interesting kind of metaphor happening between the two walls. Mm -hmm. um, and we thought of it as 
a kind of conversation, ping-ponging back and forth. And although it wasn't inherent, um, or it wasn't completely important for somebody to understand that, like, picture A went to picture B, if someone were to look at one wall and look at another, they would see that there was a dialogue happening mm -hmm. between the subjects of the images, or the content, or the arrangement of the um, different kinds of objects in the space. Yeah, that's what's so exciting about putting together shows, is once you put the artwork together in a room, all these things start to happen that don't happen, or you don't see when you're looking at the artwork individually alone. Um, and that's something I'd say too, so you're going to plan a floor plan, you're going to map out the space, but inevitably, if you get the show and are here installing, things are going to change oh, yeah. as you're hanging it. They always do. Um, so you don't want to be precious about your layout planning and be totally married to what you think the plan is going to be. But you do want to think about how um, you're presenting your proposal and how you're going to use the space as a kind of conceptual strategy. So you can think about um, the different sections of the space, this room that we're in, the main part, the darker part, as being kind of like chapters in the story that you're telling.